Then you gotta go to work, okay? Possible. Look, I'm still pretty. My lip is red. Yeah, I got a little scratch. I bit my lip. Y'all let me know when y'all ready. Y'all ready? Yeah, we're good. You okay. All right, look. Daddy got to go work, okay? I'll talk to you later. I love you. I love you. Okay. Don't want to interrupt me. I'm talking to a kid. Oh, man. Yeah, it's all good. Appreciate it. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Well, listen, I mean, this was a solid win over, over a veteran. A guy that's been around for a long time, but it's clear that you aren't really uh, happy with it. So can, can you tell us what you point to, why you're not satisfied? Sorry about that. Yeah, um, we, we, we had little time to get ready, but in the time we did, we worked really, really hard. And we wanted to come in and dominate and show force. And I didn't get, I didn't get that, that done. I got my job done as far as winning. You know, that's my number one overall goal. But um, as far as dominating like we can, like as my team is used to for the CMA, we didn't, we didn't quite, we didn't quite get that job done, and so, you know, I should have done better. You mentioned, you know, hey, fighting in front of no crowd, you've done on the Contender Series, you're not, you, but you also mentioned having a slow start. Um, I was wondering, I mean, do fighters in this environment, is it a chance that you know you don't have that adrenaline rush, you don't have maybe necessarily the, you know, focus that you might have if there's all these thousands of people staring at you in the cage and screaming and that sort of thing? I mean, does that environment maybe? Help impact the slow start? Um, honestly, no, because either way, whether there's a bunch of Brazilians screaming that I'm going to die or we walking into an empty, tough arena with no song, I always feel the same. You know, I don't really have that adrenaline rush either way. You know, we're always smiling. I know the type of work we do. And so I, I don't have time, you know, to even focus on all of that because I know we're ready. Say so, make sure we're ready. So I don't get that that rush there, you know. So it it's, it don't it doesn't affect me, you know. Either way, the standing arm triangle that you had uh, looked su surprisingly deep. I, I honestly thought he was going out for a minute. I, I did too. I was going to ask you. So at what point did you decide? Okay, I guess I, I guess I just got to let it go and move on. I was going to make him get out of it. You know, I trained at ESP Extreme Studio Performance with Mike Skacia. I wouldn't worry about my arms getting tired. I was just gonna squeeze on until he go out or he make himself get out. Like it's gonna be one of the two. And he's a veteran. I know there was a possibility of him kind of playing possum with me, but I didn't care. I was gonna squeeze on him until either his head popped or he got out. And then he obviously goes to the decision. What did you think about the scores? What did, what did, were you worried at all? Did you did you agree with the decision? I mean, did you think it should have been clear? How did you feel going to the judges? I don't know, man. The fight that I was watching, I felt like I maybe only lost that third round. But, you know, I didn't get to see the whole fight. You know, I seen most of it. You know, I was there watching you fight like the rest of you. And um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't see how he would have won the first round. I don't think he won the second round. I was hitting him with those front kicks, and I just, <clears throat> and I was trying not to chase it, man. But I, I was... I was chasing the finish. I, I'm not gonna lie. I was chasing the finish. I asked my son what he wanted me to do before I left. He said knock him out. So I was, I was, I was trying not to do it. Coach was screaming at me the entire fight. Yeah, don't brawl with him. I was trying not to. There was a couple times where he was like, "Don't brawl with him." I'm not, Coach. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. You normally talk to him that much. Yeah. And we can't hear you. Yeah. Like, you're having a conversation with him the whole fight. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I like I said, I don't have the zoom and rest. And I don't know. I don't know. I felt. Like, I just, I fought a way that, you know, I shouldn't have fought, and I kind of was in cruise control, and I shouldn't have been. I'm, I'm about to come back. I told Dana that I'm dominating the next person they put in front of me. I don't care who it is. All right, fair. The last thing for me, I was going to ask you, what is next? I mean, what do you want to do from here? I mean, are, are you looking to get rebooked quickly? Is there a name? I guess we don't really know dates or locations, but, I mean, I guess it's Vegas or Fight Island. But what, what, what makes sense for you move forward? Um, I don't know either way. If we're on Fight Island, I'm coming with my hair down like the dude from Water Combat. So <laughs> my, uh, my teammate Charles Bird always kind of tell me I look like that dude. But uh, it doesn't matter. Safe Saul, Mike Skates, my brother, we, we'll be ready for whatever. All they have to do is call us and we'll pick, we'll pick up and go. It, it doesn't matter. But right now, I want uh, Uriah Hall and Tekken. He's been ducking me. I was sitting octagon side, and I could hear the uh, Daniel Cormier's commentary during your fight from your end. I'm curious if you heard him, and if you think like 
maybe a judge hearing the commentary could maybe sway around in either you or your opponent's favor? Um, I heard a little bit. Of, I could hear his voice. I couldn't always make out exactly what he was saying because there was a guy trying to punch me in the face. And uh, I was trying to make sure that it didn't happen. But um, I could hear him. I don't think I don't think anyone commentary can sway the judges. If if I go in there and do my job, it don't matter what they say. They can say X, Y, and Z, but if I punch a guy, he go to sleep. Or if he fall, they, the judge can't deny that. And I didn't give him that, you know, I didn't do my job to that extent. But um, as far as, I, I feel like uh, commentary, I feel like um, anything after the fight, that should never sway a judge. His, ju his job, in my opinion, is to watch the fight and determine who he felt was the winner. And if you do your job as a fighter correctly, you leave them no choice. Yeah, one final one. Uh, what was your reaction when the uh, Jacare news came out last night that he was off the card after testing positive? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know, I know the work that Uriah has put in, and that dude is has been looking like phenomenal these last however long it's been. And I mean, really, my heart broke for Uriah. Like I, uh, and don't get me wrong, I feel for Jacare and his family as well. But uh, self selfishly, of like me and my team, I felt bad for Uriah. Uriah's a warrior. He's been sleeping in the gym and he's just like in buried in that mentality of, you know, going there and take people out. and. Uriah don't get enough credit for the work he's done and, and all of that. But this dude that I've seen in that gym, Uriah Hall, is is a scary cat and I was looking forward to fighting with him. Like I really felt some special was gonna happen tonight with both of us fighting together. He's like my best friend, so we always compete in at whatever we, we try to do. And I felt something special was gonna happen tonight and I really my heart really broke for him because He's been in Dallas for a long time, training and just buried into the gym. And it, it just, my heart broke for him and also for Jacare's family. But, you know, I, I, I had to refocus myself on doing my job. Hey, Ryan, uh, a little bit different, obviously, coming into this with the increased concern with the, uh, you know, the, the COVID-19 pandemic and everything like that. How has that been? From your standpoint, some of the fires happened to do obviously the additional medical screening. Man, uh, did they stick the swab in your nose? Yes, unfortunately. Well, they did me like that twice, so it was not fun, you know. <laughs> but you know, as a man, I had to come in and do uh, what I had to do for my family, my team. We made sure that you know we were prepared in the little time that we had, and I'm thankful to Florida for opening up and determining that we could come in here and do our job because everyone have bills like I wouldn't be here, you guys wouldn't be here, you know, if, if it wasn't for them opening up and determining that this is essential, which it is, it's our job. And so the UFC did an excellent job of making sure everyone is safe, they came in, they tested us all, they kept us all apart. It was pretty awesome to have my own locker room. And so like, it was, it was pretty cool that they come in and took these extra precautions. Like I said, they tested us as fighters twice. I don't know how many times they stuck that thing up your nose, but if that thing come near me again, I'm fighting somebody. <laughs>